Today's tutorial will be on public finance. We will continue our discussion on public debt. We will today discuss or scrutinize the topic of debt neutral neutrality. So without wasting any further time, let us begin. Now, if we, if at all, with debt neutrality is very much associated the Ricardian equivalence. So, if at all, I'll start with the condition that if the Ricardian equivalence prevails, then what we see is that an increase in government borrowing will be exactly offset by an equal reduction in consumption as household will seek to save to be able to pay higher taxes that is there in future. So as a result of this what happened is that debt as a result of debt neutrality there is no increase in aggregate current spending Further we add, there will be no effect on interest rate. There will be no crowding out. No effect on interest rate means that there will be no crowding out of private investment. And if there is no crowding of private investment, then there will be therefore no slowdown of future growth rate now all these you know all these variables which i have mentioned are linked to one another so if one get affected the other and the chain go no, goes on and we have done and i have showed you how these get affected in our previous tutorial but here we are saying if the debt neutrality prevails then all these variables will not get affected and hence there will be no change in the economy because there will be an offsetting effect that will be working. So let us see how this is going to operate. So what we are now going to do is we will explain how increased private savings which is a result of government borrowing can actually offset the impact of increased demand for funds on interest rate as the government borrows to finance its deficit. So let us draw a two two axes because we will show this graphically also so here on the horizontal axis i'll be measuring loanable funds and this is per year and then you have interest rate on the vertical axis I'll make a downward sloping demand curve, upward sloping supply curve and mark their intersection as say E. Okay. So this is L1 and say this is I1. So let us explain this now. So when there is an increase 
so this particular diagram i am trying to show increase in government borrowing to cover the deficit actually increases the demand for loanable funds so we have to shift the demand curve now and because there is an increase in loanable fund demand for there is an increase in demand for loanable fund meanwhile shifted upwards and to the right so let us shift this so this is our d plus del d that is change in d let me mark this as f so this is l2 say and this is i2 okay now after this there is another effect so however as a direct result of this borrowing the supply of savings actually increases from s to s dash that means we need to shift the supply curve also and this will be shifted to the right so say it shifts to s dash and say this is l3 i'll use blue ink and now we will we are sorted so and this is done to provide funds to enable the savers to meet higher anticipated tax liabilities in future okay now what we see is that the increase in supply of loanable funds results in a new equilibrium and let us call this equilibrium as g so this new equilibrium is g now at this that point an additional del l so to say this is market at del l this one del l rupees of loanable funds are made available per year and this is done to finance the private investment so what we see the equilibrium amount of loanable funds now become l3 which is this the new intersection point give us this amount of loanable funds rupees per year and at the, and if these extra funds are exactly equal to the amount of funds amount of funds that is required to finance the deficit the interest rate under the equilibrium becomes i1 only that means this the initial equilibrium prevails so thus what we see is government borrowing to cover deficits does not increases the market interest rate that is given by i so what it hap what happens is that it causes no crowding out as stated in the beginning of the tutorial itself and now we can see from the diagram also there is no crowding out of private investment and why there is no crowding out because the the market interest rate remains unaffected or 
there is no crowding out of consumer who are borrowing for durable goods so government budgetary deficit and the consequent of borrowing does not really matter in this case this means that changes in deficit will not affect aggregate demand because changes in government borrowing will be offset by changes in private savings so this is how if at all the increase in government borrowing is offset by an equal in reduction in consumption then we see there is no such change that can be observed in the economy that means if at all the ricardian equivalence prevail then there will be ultimately no slowdown of the growth rate of future growth rate of the economy so with this we wind up today's tutorial in our further tutorials we will talk about the cost benefit analysis that forms the basis of the public finance paper